Well, the point of this is um, linked to what what is called traditionally this breathing technique, kumbhaka. And kumbhaka is is spelled K-U-M-B-H-A-K-A, kumbhaka. And literally, it means breath stopping. It means breath stopping. It's a Sanskrit word. Uh, or breath retention, actually. It's not so much stopping. It's more retention or holding or retaining. And <clears throat> it's really quite simple. Um, it may have a fancy sounding name, but the practice itself is really uh, very ordinary in many ways. Now, some of us hold our breaths unintentionally, especially when we sleep. Right, Jim? <laughs> um, and, uh, and that's all well and good, but when we practice meditation or we practice sort of this, um, this pathway to settling the mind and discovering this underlying nature of our awareness, we do this intentionally. Now, we are sort of turning this kind of counterintuitive practice into something that we can use that's really quite useful. So this practice of kumbhaka involves breathing in. And as the Buddha teaches in the mindfulness teachings, breathing in long, I know I breathe in long. And I tend to every moment of that inhale until I simply stop and gently cradle the breath. I hold the breath like I'm holding a newborn baby, gently retaining the breath. And in that space before the exhale, and when the exhale happens, it's the same process of breathing out, attending to every moment of that exhale, like riding, like on a slide down a very, very um, kind of smooth hillside on a sled. Just let the exhale just take you. And then we hold again before the next in-breath. But that spot between the inhale and the exhale, is very useful. When we're able to hold in a gentle way the breath that's in that space between, the mind somehow stops thinking. And we'll, we'll be trying this in a moment. But the mind settles naturally. We're not having to fight with it or go, I don't want these thoughts, I'd rather think good thoughts or what have you. I want the thoughts that Lama Shang was talking about. I want those experiences. Yes, we all do. And to get there, the mind has to settle. So this kumbhaka is this practice of drawing in a nice gentle inhale until we have a good breath. And then we simply hold and notice in that space between who is simply present. Who is watching? Who is bearing witness to that holding? Yeah. We're not going looking. We're not going on an expedition here. We are, in fact, letting go of the looking and more allowing. Allowing the seeing to manifest. This presence of conscious awareness that is abiding here. It's always been here and it always will be here. So as the world is changing and these vicissitudes are going from one thing to the next, back and forth, this presence of awareness is actually quite still. It is what we call the changeless. It is the only thing that is simply is as it is and not subject to conditions and causes and forces. Why it's so precious, why this Tathagata is this precious, precious jewel that we don't even know we have most of the time. And yet it is such a profound, uh, powerful, deep rootedness in an experience that transcends just the moment to moment experiences. It goes really deep and it goes beyond. So Kumbhaka, as simple as this is, as holding your breath, is actually a way to practice over and over and over until the light comes on. And we have this moment of, ah, uh, this realization, quote unquote, is that. 
Tat Tvam Asi in Sanskrit, you are that. And so it can be a little surprising when it's, oh, I think I have it. Boom, it's gone. Poof. Because <laughs> the mind, it's like, is this it? Is this what, what he's talking about? Is this what Lama Shung is telling us? Am I getting there? Am I now enlightened? Boom, it's gone. It's, it's how refined it is. And this is natural. The gross level mind is just constantly wanting to get in on the act, as is the ego. This sort of sense of I-ness that is uh, separate and apart from others and other things. That has a need to be this, that, or the other, to identify. So, um, Kumbhaka, again, coming back to breathing. Mindful breath, breathing in. And in that holding of the breath, you're not just holding it until you're blue in the face. <sighs> breathe out so I can breathe in again. We're not doing that. The second we feel any tension in the nervous system, in the spine, in the neck, in the torso, you know, we're holding too tightly. That's, we've held it a bit too long there. So this sense of breath retention is really about breathing in a nice full inhale and allowing this gentle holding of the breath. And then when it's natural, before, this isn't a contest, but before we get to a point where, oh, I don't want to hold it anymore, we breathe out. And this is why we begin by only holding the breath for the count of one or two. It's very, very simple and very short. And so we breathe in, we allow that space, one, two, maybe three, and now I breathe out. And so every time we are in that space between, we are holding that in the space between our thoughts, not just in the space between the inhale and the exhale. Um, so mindful breathing, as the Buddha taught it, was that, was breathing in, holding a gentle space, Allow yourself to become aware of awareness in that space. And then as we breathe out, we release, we let go. We feel a sense of opening and releasing on the exhale. And then in that space before we breathe in, we may pause for a moment there as well. And then back to the inhale, breathing in that, that spectrum, that continuum of in-breath. Then holding, just become aware who is watching, who is bearing witness. Ah, here is the clarity that comes because the mind settles and then we breathe out. Now the mind will start thinking again. The second we are breathing in or out, the mind, the goal isn't to stop the mind. And this is a really key point. So if you practice breath retention, we're not actually holding the breath until we're tense. We're gently cradling it and then when it feels right, we're breathing out and we're making an easy flow. Right? And the second thing is um, Breathing in, um, I lost my train of thought. Actually, we were the first thing was the uh, was not allowing ourselves to get tense. The second thing then is to breathe in, feel that openness, um, and notice notice in that space between this presence. What my dear friend Marty Martin Lowenthal calls a hosting presence, and Ann and John, you on the Wednesday night calls it this too. <laughs> hosting presence is how he says, and I like that. It's it, this hosting, the sense of, the sense of of holding, of being generous, and um, just hosting all that arises. This is what he says: allowing things to arise uh, and then disperse. Oh, that's what I, that's what the second part was. It doesn't mean that the mind stops thinking. It does for that moment, but it will start again. And so what we're cultivating here is not a stopping of the mind, but rather it's a cultivating of this spatial process of awareness that we bring into the mind as it's thinking. Again, this is what we're practicing when we do this. We're not practicing stopping the mind altogether because just try doing that for any length of time. Good luck, unless you're holding your breath. So rather than uh, our goal being to stop the mind, it's cultivating a state we bring into the mind. <clears throat> we allow the mind just to you know, bring us whatever it wants. Thoughts, feelings, narratives, stories, reactions. Fine. The more the merrier. This is the hosting presence we're talking about. And, uh, and yet, 
we are also working on strengthening this capacity to bring this deeper, more subtle, more spacious quality of awareness to hold all that arises in that space. That's the identification, not the thoughts. And that's how we then, we ride the waves. We ride the waves of what comes and we, we're able to see them for what they are rather than to get pulled away from them. So holding the, our breath is a good thing in certain cases. <laughs> so that is, uh, that is Kumbhaka and we will uh, practice that a bit together. The, uh, the yogis in Himalayas and who practice this often will hold their breath for a long period of time. And they will see how long can I actually retain breath. In fact, the practice uh, when you're advanced at this, quote unquote, advanced, is you hold your breath and then you stop, you basically stop breathing altogether. And you take little sips. You you let a little bit out, you let a little bit, a little bit in. You let a little bit out, you let a little bit in. This is the uh, the more advanced practice of this, where you are holding just this bare minimum of movement with your breathing to cultivate a deepening of this state of consciousness. But don't try this at home. Um, if you do want to practice holding it for longer, get in touch with me, let me know, okay? And we can talk more about that. It, but it's really not necessary to see how long can I hold my breath? This is not a February challenge, Jim. <laughs> RPM challenge. <laughs> so um, this is something we do to have moments to drop in. And rather than tuning out, tuning in even more deeply.